Hello everybody and welcome back to a, another book related video here on my channel. Today I want to do a very very small haul, like two books type small. And I also wanted to do a 24 hour reading challenge. I won't be doing a true 24 hour reading challenge because I do have a kid, he's almost two. And also I have a lot of stuff to do during the day. So we are going to do the classic take a timer on your phone and write down after you stop reading what you ended on and continue that the next day or whenever you next start reading. So this might be a video over the course of three days. It might be a video over the course of four days. I have no clue to be honest because I have no clue how we are going to be busy or not, but I'm super excited to get into this video and I wanted to try it. So let's go ahead and hop into the mini haul. I did order from Thrift Books two different books. I have this one and then they're both hardcover. And then I also have another one that we are going to open. And I think I paid honestly around $30 and that is because because of the second one and the cardboard and that's because they only had a new option and it was like $21 itself. I did get free shipping and I got over 400 points for these two books and that's I think because it was my first order and I was really impressed with thrift books when my mom ordered them for my birthday so I wanted to order a couple books so I could finish a series and then also start a whole new series that only has three books in it. The first book that I ordered was the third book in the series of To All the Boys I Loved Before. I have all of them in hardback except for the first one now, but I was really excited to order this and start reading this. And then I also did order Midnight Sun. This is the last book in the Twilight series and I just read Twilight for the first time in November and December. I read the whole series within probably about a month truly of each other. and. I did not have the last one. I never ordered it, never found it in the store. So I wanted to read this last so I could figure out what exactly if it was an add on to the series or if it was a whole different book, but was included into the series. I was not truly sure. I do have to finish a book still. So we are going to finish that book. It is Nicholas Sparks's True Believer. I just picked up a random book that I had yet to read because I had just finished Twilight and I didn't know what to finish out the year with. So I did pick that up and we will finish that and then hopefully get into Midnight Sun. All right, it's a little bit past the first hour mark. I know it's been a little bit. I kind of stopped after 20 minutes and Josh came home and I ended up working out, doing a bunch of stuff. So I started back, I just passed the hour mark and we went from 122 or around 122 to 164. And that's because I started kind of getting out of reading a little bit, not too much. It's just mainly because I got super excited because those books finally came in and now I just really want to read them. So I only have 100 and probably about 60 pages left. So I'm going to completely finish the book and then I'm going to start on Midnight Sun more than most likely because I'm really excited. I've not read about what that is about. I'm going to leave that as a surprise, but I wanted to do a little first check-in and basically just say it is definitely going to take some days to finish this challenge for me just because of the whole not being able to read in one sitting and also I have just so much stuff to do. Hello everybody, you might hate me a little bit. I'm finally getting back to this video. It's been almost a whole week and I know that sounds terrible. It's been about five days, but I will say I've just been really busy. Josh and I have both been very, very busy. And if you're interested in vehicle related videos, if any of you guys are vehicle lovers or just appreciate vehicles and if you're interested i will hopefully be having a playlist my husband and i finally got a vehicle that can pull all of our stuff in the next year or so when we go to move because my truck sadly has a 4l60 if you don't know that's the transmission that it has in it and it cannot 
haul a bunch of stuff. They usually grenade themselves and she's got 262,000 miles. She's well past the point of potentially needing a new trans. So because of that, I cannot haul all of our house and stuff. So we ended up having to get something with at least a 4L80, which is another trans that is meant more for towing before they came out with the six speeds. It's still pretty much a very nice trans. And if you're not interested with that, that's fine. We potentially will have a playlist with a couple videos. So if you are interested, be sure to keep in touch with that. But that has taken up a lot of our days, about three, almost four of the days. I haven't been updating for this video. We have been really busy either stressing, working on that truck or just doing a bunch of stuff. So I know that's not necessarily an excuse, but I've only read a few times that first and second day I've read a lot. And then I would only pick up a book and read probably about 10 pages or so. And it would be more of just sitting inside of the truck going somewhere or if I felt really into reading all of a sudden and I was like sitting on the couch while we were relaxing, I would pick it up, but I honestly did not record any of that. I did happen to finish True Believer, Nicholas Sparks's. I was starting this, at least when filming, on page 122 and I ended it at 322 because that is technically the end of the book. I know Goodreads says like 400 pages and I think that's because it gives an insight to the next book in the series, which is At First Sight. So I read 200 pages and with basically going 40 pages an hour. It took me about five hours, not necessarily that entire night, but I did pick it up the next morning and finished it the next day. So it was about five hours I read for just this book alone, which is kind of a lot to be honest. But like I said, I've been kind of busy and I would stop and put it down and then pick it back up. I did rate this one three stars because I'm trying to be a little bit more strict on my star rating. I still want to rate majority of books four and five stars, but I just feel like if I wasn't really into it, like trying to flip a bunch of pages, it should not be four stars and if it didn't stick with me for a week or at least a couple days afterwards it probably should not be five stars so this one was three stars and I think it's only because of the fact that I got the new books and I wanted to read them that I stopped being into it but at least we're past it I do remember the book a little bit but at the same time I just wasn't the biggest fan of this book in particular but it was not bad at all so this one is three stars I do not have the dust jacket on this book I did take it off but I am a hundred and eight pages into Midnight Sun and this is the last series of Twilight. This is the one that I just unboxed in the last couple clips. With that, since I'm at 108 pages, I basically have read this book for 2 hours and 45 minutes. So that's a total of 7 hours and 45 minutes that I have read and 16 hours and 15 minutes left of the 24 hour reading challenge. This is the main book that I've been reading in the truck if I went anywhere. This is a big book very much vertical compared to even just the other Twilights. It still has the same size font where it's not necessarily too small and it's not huge, but because it's so much taller, it's taking me just a smidge longer. I do get into this book because I finally understand now that there is a point of view for Edward and that is this book, which I'm very interested about. And it's taken like a hundred pages for him just to basically get to start talking to her, which is kind of slow, but I actually don't mind it because I like the little bit of pretty much like his whole point of view and just understanding what all went down. I was really intrigued and like I said when I covered this whole book series minus this book, I thought that the novella after Eclipse was kind of pointless. A little bit of detail it gave, but other than that I just had rather seen something for Edward's point of view so that what he heard when he read people's minds. And of course we finally get that and this came out in 2020 and so I'm now finally reading it two years later. I'm very excited to finish this and I'm only about probably a fifth of the way through the book because this is a six seven hundred page book. I still have a lot of reading to go so this might be one of the last books of this actual video which kind of sucks but at the same time at least I finished one book and I picked up a second book. Also I want to include another book haul which this one's a little bit more. My husband and I ended up going to Goodwill just to kind of actually get my son some new clothes but I did scavenge through and I found a couple books about six that I really enjoyed and I will put the prices up on the screen because I can't remember which ones were a dollar specifically and which ones were what price and also because we did get the military discount so they're a couple cents different than original price. I want to start off with a Christian book. I love Christian books. I enjoy reading them. I feel like they help your faith a lot and I 
do have the Max Lucado Life Lesson Study Bible and I love that Bible so much. It was one of the first ones that I bought with my own money and it was my first study Bible and I feel like it's helped me a lot through the years. I ended up seeing this Max Lucado six hours one Friday and I wanted to pick it up. I love the cover. I wish you guys could feel it. It's absolutely gorgeous but it's very much like felt and it is so soft. That's so weird to say about a hardcover book, but it's honestly like really soft and kind of fuzzy. It's kind of weird, but it feels really nice. It's one of my first books that felt like that, and I've had matte and felt type books, but this one is by far the best one I felt. So I did pick it up because it is super beautiful on the cover, and the spine is the same as the cover, but it's also just stunning I feel like in my opinion on the bookcase next I was going through my Goodreads and trying to figure out which Nicholas Sparks books I don't have I've always loved Nicholas Sparks he's like the only romance person I actually have ever read I am missing a lot I only have probably around 12 or so books maybe 20 from him and I wanted to collect the ones that I don't have I wanted to get all of them in hardcover and also all of them if they were old enough to have where they all had like the black box with the title in his name so I did find a safe haven I've seen the movie back in 2018, but I have never read the book So I did pick it up because I was interested in it and it's very good condition All of these books are honestly good condition the rest of these are paperback and I seen still house lake And I've read it a little bit not the actual back But I was just kind of skimming through and it seemed like it was maybe a mystery or like a thriller And this is apparently the first book in a series of I do believe eight or so and it just I love the cover I felt like it was just really interesting I want to try and get back into grabbing random books at the thrift store that I personally like and trying to read those because I have found really great books because of that. Back in 2017, 2018, I happened to watch a movie called A Dog's Purpose or A Dog's Way. I do believe it was the first one and I do believe A Dog's Purpose is the first book in the series. But I did watch that movie and because of that I wanted to read the book, see what was different about the book versus the movie and I happened to see this. Back in one of my monthly wrap-ups, I talked about reading Sarah's Key. Also with the end of the year, all the books that I read in 2022, I talked about Sarah's Key. It is by Tatiana D. Rosne and it was a five-star read. It's kind of a sad book, but it also is such an amazing book. And while we were at Goodwill, I seen on the top shelf something with the same font, and I realized it was by the same author. It also has a very, very similar cover. This one is called A Secret Kept. They are not a series together, but they are very much similar, and I can post a photo of Sarah's Key right here so you can compare and contrast. I am excited. I hope this book is as good as the other book that I read by her. If not, as long as it's a four-star read, I will be very much happy. I got super excited while seeing this book and I definitely picked it up because of who the author was, how much I enjoyed the only book I ever read by her, and also it just seemed like it was maybe part of a series at the time until I researched it on Goodreads. And then the last book is another paperback that's a little bit felt and a lot of you guys probably know about this book. I, like I said, have only really read Nicholas Sparks for romance. If not Nicholas Sparks, it's Christian romance. So I've never read a true quote unquote romance book and I found this at Goodwill in a very nice condition and it is Maybe Sunday by Colleen Hoover. This is my first Colleen book. So if I don't like it or if I do like it, I might pick up more, at least finish out the series because I'm a very big series person. I love series. I like standalone books as well, but I just love being put into a series where you can read multiple books instead of just one book and done. I did see this. I did pick it up because I told my husband if I ever see certain types of books and I listed Colleen Hoover and then some other authors or some other books, I said that I was going to pick them up if they were in a thrift store and this one was a little bit more pricier and I think because of the popularity it was around three or so dollars. I do remember it was the higher end of the paperback even though that's still not bad. I was actually kind of excited. I have yet to read it and I'm not going to read it until I honestly finish finish this series because I'm very intrigued with this series and I would like to not start a series until I have more books because I'm one of those that also has to buy all the books in a series before I start a series. In that Goodwill there were also a lot of book of the month books and going back I kind of wish I would have grabbed them. It's been almost about a week now. I just wish I would have grabbed them because some of them seem so interesting. I figured if I went back to that Goodwill and perhaps they were still there I would get them then because they were also like five or six dollars. They were kind of expensive. I wanted to do a haul with the pretty much six books that I got and 
I love all the spines. I feel like every one of these books went together very well when I took a photo and posted to Instagram. I'm excited to start reading certain books like this one for the series, The Colleen Hoover, and then a couple other like the Tatiana and Diavarazne book. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tiny book haul. But let's get into this actual video. I like you, I can't wait. A first time, a first day. You're so fine, I'm so late. You sip wine, I drink straight. Don't waste time to my place. I feel my heart erase. So catch me if I fall. All right, I've been kind of trying to read a little bit, not too much, but I've been reading Midnight Sun. And as of right now, my husband and I are also trying to film a whole nother video. And I'm currently sitting in the new vehicle that we just got. There's my truck in the background. <laughs> this is why I haven't gotten to read a bunch. We've been very busy and also filming a bunch, I feel like. My husband, <laughs> who usually does something funny and he was doing it a bunch here lately, but this is a little snippet of what it's like living with my husband and just being me, basically. I feel good, you look great, I like you, I can't wait, a first time, a first day, you're so fine, I'm so late, you sip wine, I drink straight, don't waste time, to my place, I feel my heart erase, so catch me if I fall. I want to do another update for this reading vlog for this 24 hour challenge and I feel kind of bad because I feel like every time I have recorded if I'm not like actually talking to the camera it's all just POV for the most part. I've done a couple clips where you can kind of see me sitting and reading but because I feel like I'm constantly reading in different places I'm constantly stopping and then picking it up somewhere else I'm not actually recording myself I'm doing more POVs because it's kind of easier especially if we're in a vehicle because it's not necessarily that my camera is going to sit up on the dash and not necessarily roll around or even because of how heavy my lenses are they're not gonna necessarily just have my camera pointed down and then you're not even gonna get to see me actually reading I have been just doing the point of views and I hope that's still okay this Sunday I decided that next coming Sunday I was going to try and end the book at page 300 and I know that's not necessarily really far into the book. It's almost about halfway, 29 pages short. And I figured that would be a good goal to set just in case I got really busy during the week. Then that also that same Sunday, Josh and I ended up actually having a whole day off. So we did relax and he ended up playing some games and I started reading and I was doing a lot of stuff like cleaning, deep cleaning, but I also was reading and I passed my goal. I ended up actually reading until 3.42. So I am now on chapter 17 and I feel like this whole week I've really accomplished a lot for reading so I'm a little bit past halfway in the book and I'm also a little bit past halfway for the 24 hour reading challenge because I'm on page 342 I read for an extra 5 hours and 51 minutes which is a total of 13 hours and 36 minutes and that just means that we have 10 hours and 24 minutes left to do this whole challenge which is kind of good like I said I think this will be one of the last books because I do believe it's taken me like nine hours for the first half of this book which is kind of sad I'm not gonna lie I feel like that's a lot this book is around 660 pages so it's not the longest book I've ever read but it's not you know a 200 300 pager I feel like I haven't necessarily updated as much I don't know how much I did with true believer but I also every time I've been coming on here I haven't actually been saying like what is going on in the book and I feel like a lot of people do that with these challenges so I will put on the screen when I start talking about spoilers and then that way you can skip if you don't want to see any spoilers if I even talk about them you can totally skip to whichever part basically I'm kind of confused about this book just a smidge and I'm not confused about the whole story. I already read all Twilight. If you have not seen that video, go watch that after this video or even right now if you want. I have read Twilight. I enjoyed Twilight a lot. And this book is the last technical book. It's just like an add-on book to the series. So I never honestly looked up what it was about. I didn't even know it was about Edward's point of view. I thought it was her continuing the series, to be honest. And then while reading the first page, it talked about, like the author's note talked about how she was writing this in Edward's point of view. View. I am just kind of confused as to if this was supposed to be, in my mind, I thought it was a one book and done type deal and not necessarily Midnight Sun and then potentially 
I don't know if there's gonna be one more after this or two more. Unless she starts skipping a lot of the books, there has to be another way that she includes another book because I don't understand how all of Twilight can be written in Edward's point of view. And this book is so, not necessarily slow, like uneventful, but slow in progression compared to even just Twilight itself. And Twilight books, a lot of people complain that they were all just too long or it could all been summarized or at least shortened a little bit into two books instead of four. And this book, I I can kind of see that. I love Edward's point of view. I love this book so much just because I do like Edward and I do like his point of view. I like hearing his thoughts, hearing what he has thought or heard from other people. The Port Angelus, when everything goes wrong and he goes and saves her in Port Angelus, that's already on page 168. We were almost 200 pages into the book and they never even technically talked but like twice. Now at, at 17, they are first going into the meadow. Like six, chapter 16 ended with them going into the meadow. So 342 pages or 340 pages is then just going into the meadow and she's going to see Edward in the sunlight for the first time. So there are certain things about that that I'm just kind of confused about because if you've read Twilight, you are obviously know how it goes in the beginning with the whole he saved her life. Well, potentially after the whole van incident and also he tried to kind of ignore her because she was too observant and she realized that he was really strong and he moved really quick and then obviously he was scared because he didn't want anybody to know about their secrets. You know the whole storyline of pretty much how they met. I like the insight that's given because we're in Edward's point of view. I like hearing all about like what he hears from other people, some of the thoughts. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit not enough, if that makes sense. Because while reading the first Twilight, the original book, I did guess correctly what was going to happen to her in Port Angeles, but I was kind of like curious as to what necessarily Edward heard. And because Stephanie Meyer just kind of skipped around and just said, oh, well, you didn't hear their thoughts. I thought maybe because this is Edward's point of view, when we got to Port Angeles finally, we would hear the insights of what he heard from those guys or mainly the one guy who was going to attack Bella. And for some reason, we didn't hear anything. He just, Stephanie just kind of skipped around that again. I don't know if it's because she was trying to make this like YA, so it's not supposed to be too much not PG. I just figured that we would get a little bit more insight into some of the thoughts that he did here. Sometimes though, you do hear extra thoughts, which I think is cool, but I feel like it's certain time periods and this is just my personal preference that I would have loved to hear the thoughts instead of her just skipping it versus some other times when he hears like random thoughts from random people. It's just things like that that I found just a little bit not necessarily fully frustrating because I still enjoyed the book. I still enjoy Edward's point of view. If she would have written all of Twilight from Edward's point of view, I think I would have liked that more because I didn't connect to Bella too much. She kind of bugged me. She was over dramatic. Everything was just so dramatized with her, especially with her being so clumsy, getting lost in the woods, just the whole her decisions or the love triangle. That one really bugged me. I don't care if it worked out in the end. It's just kind of weird. And also there's just some things where I would have liked to honestly been in Edward's point of view a little bit more because I feel like that story, all of Twilight would have been better from his point of view. But like I said, that's just my personal preference and everybody has their own personal preferences. So I just wanted to do a little update on this book. I'm trying to get it finished before the end of the month and we only have a week left. I should be able to finish it if it isn't the fact that I'm so busy and I can't just sit down for hours on end and read. But I do enjoy this book so far. My opinion about any of the characters have not changed. I still enjoy all of the siblings, Carl, everybody like that. For the most part and the people I didn't like or I had issues with, I still feel the same way and we are only on technically book one. I do kind of like more insight to Edward and his past. So that is my small little update and we'll see what else I read.
wanted to do a huge update on Midnight Sun and I just want to say I think the last update we were on 342 pages and I finally finished the book. It was 658 pages total. I am going to rate this because I'm trying to be a little bit more stricter in a way on my star rating. So this one is going to be a three star and honestly it's because of the fact that I was interested in it when I would read it except for the fact that in December and uh, the end of November I just read all the Twilight. So pretty much 20 days later I picked up Midnight Sun not knowing what it was about because I left that as a surprise until I started reading it. I thought she was continuing the story. That's one reason I read it so quickly and I did not realize that it was Twilight but in Edward's point of view. So because of that I am going to rate it three stars because a little bit of it was just too repetitive. It would be if I wasn't reading it I didn't necessarily want to pick it up but when I did pick it up I did actually enjoy the story. I did like hearing the insights on Edward and also what other people were hearing and another thing was some people's histories you got to learn a little bit more of versus when you are in Bella's perspective you don't get as much of the backstory so that was kind of interesting and I kind of enjoyed that but I will say just like the actual Twilight series I feel like this book was a little bit worse on this I just feel like she could have shortened some of the pages or events like they could have just been two pages long of certain things that were happening instead of drawing it out so much and one example is when they were this is going to be like spoiler free so when they were going back to Arizona there was something that happened and when Edward was driving and he had the car full there was about 10 pages of them driving to try and go save Bella 10 pages of just them on the expressway driving I felt like I did not need that I felt like a page maybe two pages would have been enough but for whatever reason she wrote it as like 10 whole pages of that and then it was just really drawn out she kind of did that in the original on their way to Italy I kind of felt like that reading like for the whole plane and then finally when they touched down since this is Midnight Sun I figured maybe it wouldn't be like that because it was a big book to start off with and it was kind of weird how when we started the book it was on point with Twilight but then slowly it started getting really off track where at page 200 in the book we were barely even starting page like 40 or 50 50, I feel like in the actual Twilight book and then by the end I don't remember the exact event that ended in Twilight but I'm pretty sure what ended in Midnight Sun was not the end in Twilight so I'm kind of confused on still the whole aspect of how many books are going to be after this and also how is Stephanie writing this is she going to start summarizing stuff a little bit more and fast forwarding kind of like she did in the epilogue it was real slow and drawn out and then all of a sudden in the epilogue we skipped like a couple weeks worth until they went somewhere for school and then all of a sudden that was drawn out again but it wasn't as bad as the whole book so that is the reasoning behind a three star i still enjoyed it i feel like honestly twilight because i am trying to be a little bit more stricter instead of how originally i said it was a five star series and that's because i don't hardly read a series a lot because i like to buy them all before i actually read them twilight i think to me now is four star max i feel like in edward's point of view it would have been four for sure and i feel like in bella's point of view it's three pushing for but more four than three if that makes sense and that's just because I relate more to Edward just because I like him so much more I feel like Bella is just I don't know, some things about Bella just kind of bug me. So that is just my little wrap up. We were actually a little bit under the 24 hour mark, but because I did finish two complete books and I don't want to start a new book and only be what 20, 30 pages into it when the whole 24 hours is up, I'm just going to call it there and say we did the full 24 hours. So these are the two books that I finally finished in the course of 24 hours. It's around 982 pages worth because of this being 658, this one being 300. 22 my, my math might be wrong and I'll put it up on the screen if it is I just did it real quick in my head But we have Nicholas Sparks's true believer and then midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm going to be doing another reading vlog over a three book series that I'm actually going to start that video right now after this video So if you guys are curious stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I'll see you next week and God bless